Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Daveville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this fantastic Friday. Keep praying for our young people. They'll be returning home from camp tomorrow. And then, of course, on uh, Sunday, we've got our Bible study at 845. We've got worship at 10. It's going to be a great day of worship. Bible school starts next week, next week, June 3rd. So make sure your kids are registered and come and be a part of that. But turn with me right now to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yesterday we talked about the the wisdom that Paul used once he had gotten the the people in Corinth to, to trust in Christ once they had responded to the gospel and they trusted in Christ he began to pour into them the wisdom of of God and that wisdom is the the growth that he gives to us uh, as believers to to draw us closer to him and and to help us to minister better uh, but he says listen. The wisdom that God poured into us is a wisdom that the rulers of this age don't get. They can't understand it because if they did, they would have never crucified Jesus. That was a mystery of how God's plan was to work. But he, he continues on to describe this. Look at verse 9. He says, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Oh, listen, you and I, we cannot even begin to imagine what God has purposed and planned for us because of his great love for us. When we love him in return, he's got a great future in store for us. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be rich. That doesn't mean you're going to be popular. It doesn't mean you're going to be powerful. What it means is God's got a plan for you. And one day you'll experience the, the fullness of that plan when we go home to be with him in glory. What a powerful promise that is. Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And let, think about that. For 2,000 years, Jesus has been preparing a place for you and me, getting it ready so that when we go home to be with him, we will experience the joy that God has always purposed for his children. Now, in this life, we may struggle. In this life, we may suffer. In this life, we may have hardships. But they're light and temporary trials, Paul calls them. These things, they're not going to matter in eternity because it's just a drop in a bucket. It's just a, a, a millisecond compared to eternity that we go through these difficult times. I know it's hard. And in the process, in the process of the suffering, in the process of the hurting, you've got to learn to do what Paul does. And we'll talk about that when we get to it in Corinthians, how he had this thorn in the flesh and he cried out to God three times that God would remove that thorn in the flesh. But what God said to him is, no, I'm not going to remove that thorn in the flesh, whatever it is. He says, but I will give you the grace to withstand. My grace is sufficient for you. Trust in that in the moments that you're going through the difficult times. Trust in his grace and watch what he can do. Listen, too many times we say, God, I can't stand this anymore. I'm going to get myself out of this situation. Worst thing that you can do. Because typically you've heard that old saying, out of the frying pan and into the fire. That's what happens. We make things worse. When we wait on the Lord for his deliverance or his strength through the process, then we find that there's a greater plan than we could ever imagine. Now, look at this. Paul says we can't even begin to imagine what God has prepared for us. Verse 10, but God has revealed them, them to us through his spirit for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows, the things of a man, except the spirit of the man which is in him. In other words, how do we know what is in our hearts except ourselves? We don't. I don't know what's in your heart. You don't know what's in my heart. God does, but you and I, we don't. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So what's he saying here? While we can't know what's in each other's hearts, we can know what's in the heart of God because he's given us his Holy Spirit. That's how we know that the word of God is true. That's how we know that there's a glorious future awaiting us. That's why we anticipate the coming of Jesus. That's why we look forward to that moment when we go to him in glory and to be a part of the uh, eternal heavens that he's promised to us. That's what God has revealed to us through his spirit. The world doesn't get it. Those who are lost, they don't understand it. They don't know why we can accept death gracefully and graciously. They don't know why we aren't afraid in those final moments because they have never experienced the Holy Spirit quickening their heart and their mind to show them what awaits us. Listen, there's nothing better 
than the future that God has planned for you. Walk into it boldly and listen as you go for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Think about that this weekend. See you on Sunday. Be blessed.